And in Oregon today, officials say that Jacob Tyler Roberts, the 22-year-old gunman who killed two people and seriously wounded a 15-year-old girl before taking his own life at an Oregon mall on Tuesday, knew none of his victims. Police say that Roberts acted alone using a semi-automatic rifle that he had stolen the day before, the day before the shooting rampage at that crowded mall. Roberts had no significant criminal record, authorities said, other than a few speeding tickets. That tragedy in Oregon is only the latest in a series of mass shootings. And after every massacre, people ask, could tighter gun laws have prevented the attack? Some of those people are looking to reform online gun sales after an investigation found that 62% of online sellers agreed to sell guns to buyers who could not pass a background check. The share of online gun sales is largely unknown because under current law, many online gun sales leave no record to trace. Joining me now is Dan Gross, president of the Brady Center to Prevent Gun Violence, and John Loy, director of the Brady Center's Legal Action Project. Welcome both. I'm so glad you could come here to talk about this. Dan Gross, this goes all the way back with me. I covered the Reagan years, no Jim Brady and Sarah Brady, so there's a an issue here, and we're not talking about Second Amendment rights, but we're talking about reasonable background checks. What is the state of play right now? The state of play, you know, we're incredibly optimistic because very clearly after you see these, these mass tragedies happen, you know, this is a conversation that the American public wants to have. You know, the American public knows that as a nation we are better than this. Not only are we better than a nation with mass shootings in movie theaters and schools and places of worship, we're also better than a nation that loses 32 people to gun murders every day. And the reality is there are things, as you've pointed out, that we all agree on that have nothing to do with the Second Amendment that can prevent uh, these tragedies from happening and a big one of those things is um, doing something about the 40 percent of all gun sales in this country that aren't subject to background checks and a big part of that is the gun sales that happen over the internet and that's um, so that's you know that that seems to be a place where we can come together as a country you know if you believe in your Second Amendment rights is a law-abiding citizen you know preventing a convicted felon or a convicted domestic abuser or a terrorist God forbid from buying a gun at a gun show or over the internet has nothing Nothing to do with the rights of a law-abiding citizen who might want to hunt or might want to collect guns or might want to even protect their home. Um, it just has to do with keeping guns out of dangerous hands and making this the safer nation we all want and deserve. Now, John, if you were to believe the initial reporting out of Oregon, though, this uh, shooter who then killed himself had no legal background that might have uh, prevented him from getting a gun legally because he only had some speeding tickets. He could have passed a background check. Well, we need to look at the gun violence problem comprehensively like we do other social and public health problems. And if you look at the big picture, the 100,000 Americans who are shot every year, one of the big problems is, as Dan said, 40% of gun sales take place without a background check. And the internet can exploit that gaping hole in our laws and make it easier for dangerous people to get guns. Now, one of the things that we do focus on is these semi-automatics and the, the ammo, because with those clips, you know, yeah. you can just cause so much more damage, and Aurora, Colorado was certainly an example of that. Yeah, I mean, that's clearly part of the conversation that the American public wants to have. You know, with every one of these tragedies, you see that chorus growing, and you hear the conversation about, you know, what we can do to take these assault weapons that are made for no other purpose than kill people off off the streets and that needs to be a conversation that that needs to be a conversation that we have it's also very important though as we talk about these mass tragedies that we don't just look at uh, these in the context of you know what could have prevented that one tragedy you know like we said there are 32 murders that happen every day in our country and what can we do so you know maybe this guy would have slipped through a, a background check but you know there are 40 percent of all gun sales that aren't subject to background checks and every day there are convicted felons, domestic abusers, dangerously mentally ill who don't get any background check at all. So, you know, I think we should, it's important to express our national outrage when these tragedies happen and certainly our national sympathy. But it's also important to look at this problem, as John said, comprehensively in terms of what we can do to save lives because that's a value we all share. But, John, the assault weapon ban has expired. Uh, there's no action. This president has said sort of sympathetic things but not been willing to take on the gun lobby at least before the election, and the online sales are really hard legally to get at because online traffic has all sorts of different laws. Well, there are things we can do. 
And the first thing we can do is require background checks for all gun sales. And that would... Even online? Even online, yes. And, and so that is a major thing. But, but as you say, politicians have been slow on this issue, but the American people are ahead of the politicians. And we think that this is, uh, the American people realize that we are better than this, we're better than the America that we have right now, and the people are gonna lead the leaders in this case. And one of those social issues that has been so difficult to resolve. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. John Lowy, really good to see you.